Is PC Cooler's DE360 with its dual pump design the pinnacle of water cooling? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. Before I get onto the overview, to have full disclosure, CPS or PC Cooler did send me this cooler to test and review, but all opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you do end up liking this video, please hit that like button. And if you really like the video, how about subscribing to the channel? Now for that overview. The DE series is PC Cooler's newest AIO series. The DE360 is the only AIO that is set to release in November of 2023 and it will have an MSRP of 130 USD. The DE360 has two color options, black or white. Okay, let's see what you get in the box. There is the AIO and fans, of course, a box filled with all the mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD, which are split up into a bunch of little plastic bags. There is a small tube of thermal compound, a three to one fan splitter, and a user manual slash installation guide. Looking at the radiator, the fins are aluminum with an FPI of 21. FPI is fins per inch and 21 is a pretty standard fin density. The tubing is rubber with a nylon cover and is a bit longer than the typical length at 430 millimeters. The pump is inside the block. It uses a three pin connector. The max rated RPM of the pump is 3200. The block does have a plastic cap. There are five volt ARGB LEDs under this cap which use the 5050 connector. The cold plate of the block is copper and the dimensions of the block is 70 millimeters wide by seven millimeters long by 55 millimeters deep or high. Moving on to the fans. Now the fans don't have any model name or number on them, but they do have a four pin PWM lead. There are nine blades on each fan. Each fan does have little rubber pads on each corner. The box says the max rated RPM is 1850. And again, on the box, it does say that these are fluid dynamic bearings. The dimensions of the radiator with the fans attached is 397 millimeters long by 120 millimeters wide by 53 millimeters deep. And that brings us to the socket compatibility. The DE360 is compatible with most mainstream Intel sockets. It is also compatible with Intel's HPC lineup. For AMD compatibility, it is compatible with AM4 and AM5. Okay, moving on to how to install the CPU cooler. I will be installing this onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD mainstream sockets is pretty similar, but if you are installing it onto an Intel motherboard, please check the installation guide just to make sure that you are installing it correctly. As always, you should start off with a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat. You will need a PH2 screwdriver, some isopropyl alcohol, and something to wipe with. If you are installing this cooler onto an AM4 or AM5 motherboard like I am, you will require the backplate that came with your motherboard. With the CPU installed into the motherboard, place the backplate flat on the mat, then align the holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. Then with the motherboard flat on the backplate, you'll need to screw in the AMD standoff spacers into each of the threads on the backplate. Once that's done, you can now install the motherboard into your case. Next, I'll install the fans and radiator onto the chassis. I do recommend installing radiators along the top of the case with the fans on the top orientated as exhaust. However, if you do want to install the radiator at the front of the case, it should be installed with the tubing at the bottom. I understand this isn't always possible, but it is best practice. Now with the radiator installed, find the AMD mounting bars. These bars need to be fastened to the block. This is done by sliding the mounting bars into the block until they align with the screw threads on the block. Use the four provided screws to secure the mounting bars to the block. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Making sure to remove the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate, place the block cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the holes on the mounting bars to the standoffs. Now use your PH2 screwdriver to screw in the four spring retention screws 
locking the mounting bars and the block to the standoffs. These spring retention screws should be fastened in a cross diagonal pattern. You should also be very careful of over tightening the standoffs when tightening the spring retention screws because when I was doing it, it is possible to then kind of crank the screws a little too much, then the spacer starts moving, which could damage your motherboard. Once the block is installed, it's time to plug in all the cables. I'll start off by plugging in the pump. This three pin connector should be plugged into the pump header on your motherboard if your motherboard has one. If your motherboard doesn't have a pump header, it can be plugged into a standard fan header. So next I'll plug in the ARGB LEDs on the block. So the three pin ARGB 5050 connector gets plugged into the five volt ARGB header on your motherboard. Next are the fans. So find the three to one fan cable and simply plug each fan into the cable. Then plug the lead of the three to one cable into your CPU fan header on your motherboard. And that's it, the AIO is installed. Next, I'll quickly go over the RPM range of the fans and pump. But first, if you are appreciating all the work that I've done here, could you please support the channel by using the Amazon associate links in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location and when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. It's a great way to support the channel without actually giving money. Okay, starting with the RPM range of the fans. So with the fans attached to the radiator and having the PWM set to 100%, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 2000-ish, dropping the PWM down to 50%. The motherboard is now showing the RPM at around 1100-ish, dropping the PWM down to zero. The motherboard is showing the RPM at 480-ish. Now for the RPM of the pump, at 12 volts, the pump's RPM is at around 3400-ish. Dropping the voltage down to 6 volts has the motherboard showing the RPM at 2100-ish. Then dropping the voltage down to zero makes the pump stop working. No surprise there. And the pump kicks back on at 4.68 volts with an RPM of 1600. Moving on to the LEDs in the block. I do personally like how minimal they are. If you are someone like myself that doesn't like a lot of ARGB or RGB, this does give you the option of something without overblowing it. And of course you can use your motherboard software to change the color to whatever color you want. Not sure what else to say, so moving on to the temperature testing. Now, if you do have any questions on how I test the CPU coolers, I strongly recommend that you watch my CPU cooling testing methodology video. I go over the how and what's there. I'll have a card along the top and I'll also have it linked down in the description. The DE360 in my 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test is in between the Peerless Assassin 120 and the NHD15S with a CPU temperature of 71.8C. And here's the ambient room recording plus the audio recording of the cooler at 35 dBA. When I let the fans run at full speed, the average CPU temperature dropped. Now this did have the sound level of the cooler go up to 38 dBA. And here's the ambient room recording plus the audio recording of the cooler at full speed. A two Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests at this wattage is a bit odd, but isn't overly concerning, primarily because you shouldn't really be using a 360 AIO for a 90-ish watt load. It just doesn't really make any sense. Now for a more reasonable test for this cooler, so a 150 watt load with the cooler noise equalized to 35 dBA, and this had the CPU's average steady state temperature at 74.5 C, which has it topping the chart, but realistically it is pretty much matching the D15, which is pretty impressive. Now when I let the fans run at full speed, the average CPU steady state temperature dropped to 70.6 C. So again, it is topping the chart. So what do I think of the DE360? It is a high performance CPU cooler that was able to match the larger air coolers in my 150 watt 35 dBA testing. 
which isn't bad, but there is something very important to take away from that. And that's 360 millimeter AIOs only start making sense with CPU loads getting over 150 watts. And they really start making sense when the CPU loads are getting up to 200 or even over 200 watts. Now, please don't get me wrong. And I have said this about other 360 AIOs as well. This is a good cooler and it does perform well at lower DBA, but it's a lot of money. Most people would be likely better off going with a good air cooler rather than a 360 AIO. If you do have a cooler that puts out 200 plus watts, then you are somebody who should be looking at this AIO. Now, if you don't, you'd likely just be better off saving your money and going with a good air cooler. Meaning if you do have a 7950X or X3D or a 3900K, 14900K or whatever, putting 130 USD towards a 360 AIO makes sense. If you have a 7700 or a 13600K, it doesn't quite make as much sense. So this is for the top end CPUs or it makes the most sense for the top end CPUs. Now, if you do want to get a 360 AIO, you can get a 360 AIO. It's just understanding that you'll likely be paying a lot more money than you need to be. And I guess I'll just leave it at that. So if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and then you get to view all of my charts. A link is in the description. Uh, there is also Patreon if you would like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. Uh, you might want to check out this. It will likely be my CPU cooler playlist. If this cooler doesn't quite make sense for you, you can maybe find something there that makes sense for you. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.